Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and designing a latch circuit. And the purpose of this latch circuit is that we can switch something on and the latch circuit stays on until we have done our job with the ESP32 and then we can switch off the whole circuit. And these are my requirements for the circuit. The switch, a normally open or closed switch, can turn on the circuit and the circuit stays on or latches until the ESP32 has done his job. And the ESP32 should be able to turn the whole circuit off. And certainly this makes only sense if we have some kind of battery powered system and we should should also be able to switch more than the ESP32 on or off. Maybe some kind of OLED display or LCD display or maybe some kind of LEDs and so on. So I designed this to switch more than one amp. And if the whole circuit is off, the whole circuit should draw a very small current and I designed the circuit to draw less than one micro Amp. And also if we switch our load and the ESP32 is some kind of load, if we switch it on, the whole voltage drop about the switches should be less than 0.1 volt. So we can use the whole battery voltage to power up our system. So this is an overview of the circuit. We have on the one side our battery and I use a Lifepo 4 battery with 3.2 volt in average. And in the middle we have our latching circuit and on the other side we have our ESP32 as a load. First let us begin and concentrate of the first part of the circuit. We have our battery and one MOSFET and, and on our connector we can connect a normally open switch. And as a MOSFET I use a P-channel MOSFET and this is the source, the drain and the gate of the MOSFET. And we can see the P-channel MOSFET as a switch and as long as the gate source voltage is above a certain level, the MOSFET is switched off. And in this case, the 2.2 mag ohm resistor holds the gate of the MOSFET at the positive battery voltage, so the gate is on the same level as the source. And if we now connect a switch and close the switch, the gate source threshold drops down to minus 3.2 volts and the p-channel MOSFET conducts and acts as a closed switch. And now we can see the second part of the circuit. Here we have an N-channel MOSFET where the source is connected to ground. The drain is connected to the gate of the P-channel MOSFET and the gate is connected to a small voltage divider where the upper part is connected to the drain output of the P-channel MOSFET and the lower part is connected to the ground. And if we now start our circuit and our switch is open, then also our P-channel MOSFET is open because our gate is pulled high via the 2.2 mag ohm resistor on the gate. And the same is on the N-channel MOSFET. The gate is pulled down via the 2.2 mag ohm resistor. So our N-channel MOSFET is also open. So if we now close the switch and pull the gate of the P-channel MOSFET to ground, the P-channel MOSFET also closes and because our 100 kilo ohm resistor is 20 times smaller than the 2 mag ohm resistor, the gate of the N-channel MOSFET is pulled high and so the N-channel MOSFET is switched on. 
So now we have the situation that the switch pulls the gate of the P-channel MOSFET to ground and also the conducted N-channel MOSFET pulls the gate of the P-channel MOSFET to ground. So if we now release the button, the whole circuit stays on because all of the MOSFETs are holding together their states. Now we can use the ESP32 because it's now switched on and we can tie one of the GPIO ports to the gate of the N-channel MOSFET and we use the GPIO pin to switch the gate to ground and now the N-channel MOSFET is switched off and so we have the gate of our P-channel MOSFET is now pulled high and so the P-channel MOSFET switches off and so does the ESP32. First I test the circuit with an LED. I just have a button to latch the circuit and a button to release the circuits. So we see the LED goes on and goes off. Next I test an ESP32 LoRa board with an OLED display and I connect just the ground and 3.3 volt rail to the board. And then we can see that if we press the button the ESP32 goes on and also the LED and after a while if the ESP is running we can press the release button and both of them goes off. And we can do this several times so I switch it on and off and on and off again and so on. And sure, we can also use a plain ESP32 board, but maybe with some development boards, I have some issues. So maybe the voltage regulator or the integrated UART bridge are preventing from running the ESP32 from the battery. But next, I want to check the current draw of the circuit. So I connect my fluke multimeter to the circuit circuit to test the current consumption. But certainly current cannot be consumed, so also no energy can be consumed, it's only transferred to another energy state. First we see that in the off state our multimeter shows not one micro ampere draw, not even 100 nano ampere and this is below the scale. So that's a good result. So let us switch on the circuit and in the micro ampere range we cannot draw enough current because of the high current shunt inside the fluke multimeter. So I have to switch switch to the milliampere range and then we can switch on the circuit. And on this firmware the current draw with the OLED display is around 60 milliampere up to 80 milliampere. So now we see the current draw is dropping a little bit and after finishing the text on the display it rises up again. So we can switch the circuit off and we see the current draw is drops to zero. And even if we switch back to the microampere range the current is below the scale of the multimeter. So just repeat the whole test again and we get the same result. We start high and then drops a little bit and after finishing the text we rises up again to 80 milliamperes. And now let's test also the voltage drop of the circuit and I connect the wires to, to measure the voltage of the circuit. First we start with the battery voltage and we get a reading from about 3.29 or 3.3 volts. So let's switch it on and we see that we are now about 3.25 or 3.4. So we have a drop of about 60 millivolts on the battery. Now let's look into the output of the latch circuit or the input of the ESP32 load and we can measure also a voltage drop if we run the circuit. 
So now we switch on and we get a reading from about 2.8, 2.7, sometimes 2.9, so around about 2.9 volts. And we can wait till the firmware reach the end of the text output of the OLED display, but the reading stays nearly the same. So we can compare this with the input battery again. And on the input, we have still the 3.2 watts. So back to the output of the circuit and we wait a little bit and then I just switch off the circuit and we drop below zero, but there have to be some kind of capacitor that is slowly discharged as you see. So the voltage drops down very slowly. Now just one test again, we do another test cycle and then we do the whole measurement without the ESP32 load and just the LED. And now we can see we have nearly the whole battery voltage on the output. And also if we switch off the circuit, the voltage drops down to nearly zero. And if we switch it on, we get also the battery voltage on the output. So this is my circuit in the LT Spy simulation and for simulating the switches, the normally opened or normally closed switch, I just use a voltage source and a MOSFET to simulate the press of the buttons. And here we have the latch circuit with the P-channel MOSFET and also the N-channel latching MOSFET. And on the output of the circuit I have in also in reverse protection, also in P-channel MOSFET in reverse, so we don't have any current back current that's flowing into our circuit. So if we also connect this battery monitoring circuit, then if we switched on via the battery monitoring, then we don't get any back current draw. And this is a little bit closer look to my schematic I drawn in KiCat. And as you already see in the simulation, we have our connectors for the normally opened or normally closed switch. They can switch on the latch circuit with a P-channel MOSFET and also here the N-channel MOSFET and also as we see in the reverse protection and that's connected via the battery monitoring circuit here on the bottom of the schematic and all together is connected to an ESP32 room module. So we have also here a connector to program the module if we already soldered the module on our board. And this is the result after putting all the components and footprints to the PCB editor and also connect all the traces all together and draw some ground fills like so. And we can also see the bottom ground fill and the top ground fill. And surely we can also watch this in 3D. So. I can better imagine what the board was looking after manufacturing if I see the result in 3D. So I switch on the surface mount components and we see a simulation of the ESP32 and also the surface mount components and so on. So we have a better understanding what's what our board is looking. So I can also switch on the through hole components, but maybe this is a little bit confusing. So let's switch them off again and also switch off the solder mask layer so we can see our traces better. And maybe also switch off the silk screen so we can better see if all our components are connected and everything and so on. But surely, yes, I do also the rule checking and I start my design rule checking and everything is up. So the design rule check is a must have before we go to the manufacturing. 
and surely I just export with plot my all my my layers. So I plot the kappa layers and also the paste layers for doing maybe a stencil and this is for the PCB, the silk screen layers and the mask layers. And I also do the edge cuts and the margins and so on. And also generate a drill file. And here we can also see a panned version. I use mostly 10 by 10 PCBs, so I can use up the whole space for six modules. And surely let's look into the 3D view. So we have all the board the back side and we have also a front side. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you find this interesting or learn something and also enjoy the video. Stay tuned and see you next time. And if you wish or like, you can also give me a thumbs up for the video and also write some comments and you find also more information in the description of the video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.